Hey guys, in this tutorial, we're gonna learn how to create this laggy glitch effect entirely in After Effects. It works perfect for recreating the lag you see on FaceTime calls or video transmissions. It's really easy to create, no plugins are required, and you can easily dial in the amount of the effect that you want. And if you guys wanna follow along, there's gonna be a free project file available on the blog post. A link for that will be in the description. With that, let's go ahead and get started. All right guys, inside of After Effects, let's go ahead and start by making a new composition. I'm just gonna have this be a 1920 by 1080 comp. I'm gonna have mine be at 24 frames per second. I think it's 10 seconds long. And I'll just call this my main comp. And go ahead and click okay. And the first thing we need to do is actually create our glitch effect. And we're gonna do that with fractal noise. So I'm just gonna right click here, let's do a new solid. I'll just call this fractal. Just make sure it is the same size as the composition. Go ahead and click OK. And with that solid selected, let's come over to Effect. Then under Noise and Grain, we're going to select Fractal Noise. And this is going to serve as a Luma mat, so the black and white values of this Fractal Noise effect are going to be what's actually displacing our base footage. So let's just dial in some blocky looking settings here. So I'm going to go to the Fractal Type, and I'm going to change this to be Turbulent Smooth. You can see it looks a little bit more techy there. And under Noise Type, let's go ahead and change this to be Block. And I'm gonna set the contrast here to be 280, just to bump that up quite a bit. And then for the brightness, I do wanna bring that back down some. So I'm gonna set this to be negative 125. So now we get a very contrasty result. Let's go ahead and toggle down the transform settings. And I wanna uncheck this uniform scaling because I wanna make these blocks be a little bit more kind of rectangular. Now this is totally optional and you can design your glitches in any shape you want. You may actually want more of a square shaped glitch here. But in my case, I want these to be more like a rectangle shape. And I'm gonna set the scale width here to be 540. And then for the scale height, I'm gonna set this to be 40. So you can see we get some very rectangular looking results here with the glitch that's left. Now let's come down here to the complexity and this is a little too complex for me. So I'm gonna dial this down from six to two. This just dials the amount of glitches we're gonna see on screen down a little bit. And now to kind of power this glitch effect so that it changes over time, kind of automatically runs for us. We're gonna use some expressions on three different settings here. So I'm gonna to toggle down the sub settings. And you can see we have this sub scaling, the default is 56. If I go ahead and adjust this, you can kind of see how that changes, how that looks. So I wanna add an expression to this, so this kind of automatically just changes on its own. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna alt click on the sub scaling here, a little stopwatch, and that's gonna bring up the expressions down here. And I'm just gonna use a wiggle expression, so I'm gonna type in wiggle, and then open parentheses, and I'm gonna do three comma 30. So three times per second, this is gonna move around 30 pixels. I can just click away from this now, and that'll go ahead and add that expression there. If I go ahead and scroll through here, we can kind of see what that's doing. So that's giving us a little bit of movement there with that subscaling. But I wanna do a little bit more than just having this bounce around like that. I actually want the other kind of glitches to continuously change. And one easy way we can do that is under the evolution options down here, we have this random seed value. And you can see if I scroll through this, it's gonna just change up the glitches. And that's kind of the movement that I'm wanting. So what we can do is actually add an expression to this random seed value. So I'm just gonna alt click on that stopwatch there. And that'll bring up the expressions window down here where we can type in our expression. And I'm gonna use two different expressions for this one. So the first one's gonna be posterized time. And this is case sensitive, so I'm gonna type in posterized time. You can actually see it start to pop up down here. So I'm just gonna hit enter on that so it'll add that. And in between the parentheses here, I'm gonna type in six. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna change that random seed value every six frames. So you could change this to any value you want. Again, the max you could do in this case would be 24 because we only have 24 frames per second. So now I'm just gonna click at the very end of that expression there. I'm gonna add a semicolon. So I'm gonna add that in there. And we need to add another expression here so it knows where to grab that value from. And we want it to be basically a random value between zero and 500. So I'm just gonna type in random. Then I'm gonna do open parentheses and I'm gonna type in 500. And then that's already added the close parentheses there. So I'm just gonna click away. And just for me to recap again, what this is doing, every six frames of the posterized time effect, it's selecting a random value between zero and 500. So if we go ahead and scroll through here, we can see kind of how that's changing over time. Let's do a quick RAM preview of this. So you can see we're getting a nice kind of technical glitch effect there with that. However, we can juice this up a little bit more, add a little bit more movement to it by just adding another expression to the evolution here. 
So if we go ahead and scroll this, you can kind of see how that's gonna change things too. So I'm just gonna hit Control Z to revert that back to zero. And I'm just gonna alt click on the evolution there. And for this one, it's super simple. We're just gonna type in time and then asterisk there and it's gonna be 1000. And so that's time times 1000. That's just gonna automatically kind of run that through as well. So we can ramp preview this. And so now we're getting some nice sporadic movement on everything. And again, if any of this is a little too intense for what you're wanting, you could dial these back any which way. One final thing I will mention though, is if you do type in the posterize time here, as I mentioned, this is case sensitive. So posterize is lowercase and then a capital T on time there. So that's one thing to make note of if you are gonna type those in manually. And now we're done basically setting up the back end of the glitch effect. Now the way you're gonna control the amount of the glitch here is actually gonna be using this brightness controller up here in the fractal noise effect. So wherever these white squares are, rectangles with this glitch, those are actually what's gonna be distorting on our footage. And you can see if I drag this down all the way, it'll actually get rid of those. So in this case, there would be no glitches on our footage. And if you want to juice it back up really high, you can do that as well. So you'd have a ton of glitches. So I'm just gonna undo that and leave that again at negative 125. Just for the moment, we'll come back and look at that when we actually add in our footage. So let's go back over to the project panel here. I'm just gonna collapse the fractal noise effect down here. And I'm gonna select some footage I've got here just of me talking on camera. I'm gonna place it below the fractal noise. And I'm actually gonna hit Control D or Command D on a Mac to duplicate that talking footage. So I've got two different copies, of the exact same footage on the bottom copy. I'm gonna turn off the visibility of it for the time being. And on this middle copy right here, come over here to track mat. And if you don't see that, just hit F4 on the keyboard. And under track mat there, I'm gonna select that. And at the bottom, I'm gonna select Luma inverted mat. So that's going to use our footage as a Luma mat on that fractal effect. So now we can see that. So essentially what's happening is the glitch is appearing on the footage, but it's just transparent right now. That's why everything looks black. So if I turn on transparency here, you can see it's actually just seeing through the footage. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna come down here to that bottom copy of our footage here, that duplicate copy. Let's go ahead and turn the visibility of it back on. And now what's happening is that second copy of our footage is essentially filling in the gaps where that glitch effect is appearing. So now everything actually looks perfectly normal. But if I take that bottom copy of the footage, one way we can kind of see just how many glitches are on screen. If I just offset this, if I just drag it a little bit and offset it, now we can start to see kind of that offset of, of everything through the footage. And you can see all the glitches appearing on screen. But right now, if we just offset it like that, it's almost too many glitches. So I'm gonna hit Control Z to undo that. So I want these to both still be aligned up. And it's really cool, the effect we're gonna use here just to kind of offset this bottom footage. So with it selected, we're gonna use the posterized time effect. So again, with that bottom footage selected, come up here to effect. We're gonna come down here to time and we're gonna select posterize time. And this is gonna essentially allow us to slow down the frame rate of that second copy of our footage that we're gonna be seeing with the glitch. And so the default frame rate here, of course, is 24 frames per second. I'm just gonna set this to be six. And what I like about this is that means we're gonna see the glitches, but then about every six frames, it's gonna kind of correct because every six frame will basically be the same as our top footage. So let's do a quick grand preview of this. You can see the effect in action. And what's cool about this too is because the background in this particular case is stationary, we're really only seeing the glitch on me as I kind of move around on screen because that's really the only thing that's changing, you know, every six frames, the background's staying the same. So it almost looks like the glitches are just appearing kind of where I'm moving. And again, this is something that's very typical with like a transmission or Skype video call, those type of glitches you're gonna see. And let me find a spot where the glitches are really prevalent here. And as I mentioned, you guys can keyframe again, how many glitches are on screen. So let's go back to our fractal effect here. And now we have the brightness controller up here. So if I dial this back down, it's actually gonna see, it's gonna remove those glitches because again, it's using kind of that inverted Luma mat to basically create those glitch points. And if we increase this up really high, we're gonna get a lot more so we can really glitch out the footage. So we can essentially keyframe this brightness to control when and where we want the glitches to be on screen. So let's just go ahead and do that really quickly here. So I'm gonna bring this back over to kind of near the beginning. And I'll just bring this down really far be like negative 400 something so there's no glitches there so let's do a keyframe there for the brightness and let's just move over a little bit bump this back up to around negative 125 or so and if i hit you on the keyboard we can see those keyframes there so you can kind of see where we get no glitches in the beginning and then once it hits that they start to appear and then again we could just add another keyframe in here if we want those to kind of stop later on so i can just dial this back down and so we're essentially keyframing in where we want the glitches to appear and kind of have a little bit more control that way. I'm gonna go through and add a few more kind of these popping up throughout this video and I'll just skip ahead when I get this done. 
All right, now I've got that done. You can see kind of here as this plays back where I went in and kind of keyframed some glitches to appear selectively on the video. Now, something else that's really cool that you can do is you can apply effects to the bottom copy of our footage and those will kind of basically appear through the glitches. So you can customize the glitch in a lot of different ways this way. So let me select this bottom footage here just to demonstrate this. So right now we really don't see much difference when everything's kind of synced up because again, we're just using the exact same copy of our original footage. So with our bottom footage here selected, I'm gonna come here to effect. Let's go to color correction and I'm gonna select tint. And I'm gonna set this to be on like 50%, the tint amount. So this is gonna kind of desaturate where we see those glitch areas. So you can kind of see that here uh, when the glitching occurs. So if I just kind of zoom in on this, go ahead and hit the tilde key and zoom in. And you can see kind of what that's doing there, adding that tint effect so my teeth look really good there. But yeah, that's another way you can just add in kind of cool secondary glitches just by applying effects to this bottom copy of our footage. Something that can look really cool is adding in some chromatic aberration. So I'm gonna come up here and delete the tint effect. And I wanna use a free chromatic abrasion effect that is from Plugin Everything. I'll have a link for this on the blog post if you guys need to find out where you can download it at. It's a really popular chromatic abrasion effect. And if you've ever created chromatic abrasion in After Effects without plugins, it's a little bit of a long workaround to do that. So this plugin definitely helps with that a lot. So let me just demonstrate this again, cause it is a free plugin. So I'm gonna select my footage down there at the very bottom, come up here to effect and under plugin everything here, I'm gonna select that quick chromatic aberration too. And I wanna come over and uncheck this unmalt here, turn that off. So it just kind of fills in the background. And what I'm gonna do is on the position right here, I'm just gonna bump this up to like 6.5. And you can see what I like about this is where those glitches are appearing, we get kind of that chromatic aberration effect kind of showing through the glitches. And I think it looks really cool. If I go ahead and solo the bottom copy of our footage here, you kind of see what that actual base footage looks like. So I'll just unsolo that. All right, so now I wanna show you guys a few secondary tricks you can use to make the glitch look even better. So one thing I like to do is add a little bit of posterized time over little sections of the video so it kinda of like lags and the video kinda of slows down to a slower frame rate at random parts, even when the glitches are on screen, so it's gonna slow down everything. So I'm just gonna right click here and let's do a new adjustment layer. I'll just kinda of show you guys what I'm talking about here. So on this adjustment layer, let's come over to effect and let's go to time and I'm gonna select posterized time again. And let's go ahead and set this on something really low. I'm gonna set it like three. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to basically adjust the size of this adjustment layer. So it's not over the entire footage, just it's in little chunks here. So I'm just gonna come down here and hit Control Shift D. And that's actually gonna split that clip there. So now you kind of see how I've isolated that. So I'm just gonna make this into a few little blocks. So I'll do the same thing here, Control Shift D. I'm just cutting this up in different sections. And so now I've kind of got these little groups. And so what's gonna happen here is as this plays, when it hits these little blocks, you can see the frame rate's really gonna drop off drastically. So that's gonna kind of add kind of a laggy look kind of on top of everything else, including the glitch, so it's kind of cool. And you can come in here and you could adjust each of these to different times. So like this one, I could set it to be like six. And maybe this one down here, I could set it to just be only like 12, so it's only like half as slow. But I'll just go ahead and ramp preview this and kind of see what this looks like. Again, you can see it's just kind of cool because it adds just a slight secondary lag onto everything when it's playing through. And something else you can do is you can actually add in other clips above your bottom footage here, because again, whatever we put down here is what's gonna be showing through those little kind of glitch areas. So another thing I like to do is I'm gonna come over here in my footage, I've got a clip of just the background. So like with me totally removed. So let's just drag this in here and I'm gonna place it above the bottom copy of the footage here. And I'm just gonna make this kind of a short little section because I don't want it to be on screen too long. But you'll see as this plays through, once it hits that, because of the gaps here, it's just going to show kind of the background kind of through me. So it's almost like I'm invisible from the glitches. And what I might do to make this look a little nicer is I might duplicate this and just bring this above everything. So it kind of one little section of the video, it's almost like I completely disappear and then kind of reappear back. So this could be really cool if you wanted to create like a hologram like effect if you're adding a glitch to something like that. And something else that can look really cool is if you have other footage of you in the same area, but you're just kind of moving around to a different place. And so this can kind of add like another secondary dramatic lag to it. So I'm just gonna grab this clip, place it above my bottom footage here at the very bottom. So again, when the glitches kind of shine through, you can kind of see here, like I'm appearing over here in these other glitched areas, but it's again, it's a second copy, like a cool distortion effect you can create with that. And quickly jumping over to Premiere Pro, if you wanna kind of mess with the audio whenever you have the glitches appear on screen, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna right click on my video clip here. And let's go ahead and unlink this. So we can just select the audio there. And all you really need to do is just cut out a few little sections of the audio 
there using the trim tool. I'm just gonna hit C and I can just click and kind of cut away little audio bits, select those and delete them. And little accents like that really go a long way when you're adding in the glitch. And something else you can do maybe on a little clip here of the audio is use the pitch shifter effect. So if I come here and type in pitch, you'll see you have the pitch shifter effect here and you can apply that to some audio and then come in here and you can adjust under edit here. You can lower the semitones of that. And little accents like that really go a long way when you're trying to sell a realistic glitch effect like that. All right, guys, one final thing, because I know only the cool kids are left watching this tutorial this far in. So I'm gonna show you guys one other kind of cool secret thing I didn't mention. And that's how we can add a little bit more of like a tech kind of sci-fi effect to the glitch. And this was just something I discovered very late in kind of creating this tutorial and I thought it looked pretty cool. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna select the fractal solid here. I'm gonna turn on the visibility for that. Let's go ahead and just solo it actually and just take a look at it here. So you can see how the glitch appears here, what it looks like. Let's say we wanted this to be some sort of like really crazy sci-fi shapes. A cool thing we can do is with our fractal effect selected here, let's go to the effects controls. I'm just gonna toggle that up. Come up here to effect, and let's go down here to stylize, and we're gonna select the CC Caladia, so that kaleidoscope effect, I'm just gonna select that. And that's gonna apply it right after our fractal noise here, you can see. And then you can go ahead and check out these different mirroring options you have. One I really like is this final one here, the starlish one. So I'm gonna select that. And if I go ahead and scroll through here, you can kind of see what's happening. We get these crazy shapes. So it's essentially gonna use this now as kind of our glitch mat. So let's go ahead and unsolo the fractal effect here and turn the visibility back off. So it's just kind of using that Luma mat. And so if you look at this, when the effect appears on screen, you're gonna see we get these crazy shapes kind of appearing here. You can see, and that's actually being used as kind of that glitch mat. And so it's just kind of a cool way you can accent the glitch if you wanna have maybe it be an abstract shape or some kind of sort of like neural link like effect you can see there with all this kind of craziness going on. So that's just kind of a fun bonus tip there you guys can experiment with. All right guys, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you wanna break down my After Effects project, go ahead and download that free project file from the blog post. Again, I'm Charles of Premium Beat, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.